sometimes there are days that I go on the internet and I'm pretty happy with what I find, right? Um, you know, whether it's amazing gaming news, cool stories, tips and tricks, uh, you know, maybe it's a sporting event or some sports story that I'm really into because I'm a big sports fan as well. And then other times I log in online and as I'm browsing through things, I start to get a little bit annoyed. And today's one of those days because Tears of the Kingdom keeps getting hate. And where is it getting the hate from? We talked about review bombs. This time it's basically coming from what I seem to, I, I guess divulge our PlayStation fans. Like we talked about how Xbox gamers a little bit before, but now PlayStation fans seem to be upset at Tears of the Kingdom. And I think it's because they're worried that Tears of the Kingdom is going to win Game of the Year, if I had to guess. Or maybe they just don't like the attention it gets in comparison to their favorite franchises. I don't know. It's kind of crazy. Uh, but we're going to dive into it because I need to get this off my chest. It's just something that until I get this out, I can't really move on to the next thing. Now, before I do that, I do need to tell you about something. What if this video was sponsored by Raid Shadow Legends? You know, I get to tell you about 700 unique champions you can play with, the amazing graphics, the awesome combination of PvE versus PvP combat. What? Heck, I actually just play it in my free time using a little known aspect of the game known as autoplay. Well, lucky for you, this video is sponsored by Raid Shadow Legends. So let's dive into some more details. Raid Shadow Legends is a detailed tactical RPG where every great game has serious challenges. Something you can really dig your teeth into if you want to master it. So many campaigns in here. Well, in Raid Shadow Legends, that end game is the Doom Tower. To climb to the top, you're going to need an army of champions. The regular Doom Tower floors tend to be pretty easy to deal with if you've just got a strong team, but the bosses are really tough. I could go on for ages talking about how to try to fight these bosses, but the real fun is trying that out for yourself. But we need to talk about Call of the Arbiter. The first episode of Raid Call of the Arbiter is out now. To celebrate this awesome new limited series, Raid's going to be adding some of the new characters that you see in the series of champions in game. Pretty cool, right? One of them, the fearsome orc warlord Artek, will be available to everyone just by logging into Raid for seven days between now and July 24th. If you've seen episode one, you'll know exactly who Artek is. But I don't want to spoil the surprise here. Trust me, just go watch episode one and all will be revealed. If you haven't started playing yet, then what are you waiting for? Use my link in the description or the QR code, scan it right now to get insane bonuses. We're talking things like an epic champion called Talia from the Sacred Order faction. Just hit the link in the description and you know what? Maybe I'll see you on the battlefield. Thanks again to Raid Shadow Legends for sponsoring this video. Now, before I get deeper into this, I do want to just remind you, I am on the road to 133,000 subscribers. And look, being a full-time YouTuber is a dream. I'm actually living that dream right now, but it's not, you know, I'm not comfortable. I'm a family man. I'm raising uh, three children. And I want to teach a lesson to myself and to my children that it's never too late to chase your dreams. So I would appreciate if you would subscribe to the channel. We also have a giveaway going on as well uh, down in the uh, description, I, I think, on this video. You can click a link to enter that giveaway. Winners are chosen next month. We're giving away like a highly and Shield replica. That's kind of cool. All right. I've wasted enough of your time. Let's actually get into the brux of this video. I put timestamps. I hope you guys skipped around to the areas that you want to get to, including this one. And I am really frustrated. Uh, you know, Player Essence made a video earlier today talking about how Horizon fans are upset about Tears of the Kingdom, right? And honestly, he just referenced one fan. It's a fan I quote tweeted myself. Uh, and this fan over on Twitter, again, I don't want to show his name or give him too much attention. Uh, but it's basically, he said, you know, Horizon Forbidden West is a better game than Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. But you all don't want to have this conversation. And then obviously I said, I'd like to have this conversation. And Player Essence said the same thing. And the guy did actually respond to Player Essence and said, Horizon Forbidden West is better in every way imaginable. Zelda's gameplay is nothing special unless you like your weapons breaking after three attacks. Also, I haven't seen a soul mention the narrative when talking on this game. And as I dove down the rabbit hole on Reddit and Twitter and other forums, it, it started to become obvious to me that there is a growing distaste for Tears of the Kingdom coming from an audience that I guess we should expect it to come from. But one that's just 
I don't know why it exists. Uh, it's not like Zelda fans are going out of their way to attack Horizon Forbidden West or Spider-Man or Final Fantasy 16 or God of War. I mean, they, these, these games don't even cross our lips. We just don't talk about them, at least in a general sense. I'm sure there are some Nintendo fans out there that maybe go out of their way to try to flame the fires, but it's weird because we don't go, and typically, from what I can tell, and I'm pretty heavily invested in the Nintendo community, we don't go out of our way to go after the other platforms. We just let them do their thing. Hey, if Xbox wants to have their games and buy Activision Blizzard, cool. Uh, you know, Sony's got good stuff with the Forbidden West, God of War. Uh, you know, I've enjoyed a number of games on PlayStation 5. Cool. And then, hey, we have our own thing going on over here with Nintendo Switch. We don't really go out of our way to put down other games to prop up ours unless we are poked and prodded like this person did on Twitter, poking and prodding uh Player Essence, myself, and many other Nintendo fans. And it's very interesting to me thinking about how this consistently happens every time specifically a new Zelda game drops. Uh, it, this happened back with Breath of the Wild in comparison to like Horizon Zero Dawn at the time. Obviously, Forbidden West came out last year. I look at how these fans attack Zelda and I think the one thing that keeps coming to my mind is jealousy. Jealous of the success of an IP that isn't on their platform. And maybe they think the IP would be significantly better on their platform. And if we're honest, yeah, Tears of the Kingdom could be 60 FPS and 4K on PlayStation 5. No doubt, especially with that development team behind it. But setting that aside, I think there's just an inherent jealousy. Like when you when you hear things like, oh, the weapon breaks after three attacks. Sure, when you first pick up a stick, but they fixed it by adding fuse. And once you get that ability, it ain't no three attacks for any weapon to break. So I, I just kind of look at this from a flabbergasted point of view that I don't want to attack other games to make Tears of the Kingdom sound better, right? I don't want to put down Horizon Forbidden West to prop up Tears of the Kingdom because I think Tears of the Kingdom can stand on its own. I don't think it needs to put other games down to justify how good it is because they are different games in different worlds with different narratives and different goals, different visual styles, different development studios. I Look, I don't think it's fair to directly compare because they're not attempting to do the same things. I just feel that it gets old watching the fan wars. That's really what this is, right? It's fan wars. Making this video is probably exactly what people like this person on Twitter and other places want me to do. They want me to make a big deal out of this. And it's really not. In the grand scheme, 10 plus million, 10.3 million or so people are playing Tears of the Kingdom or more, maybe 11, 12 million by now. We don't know, obviously, the current sales beyond launch weekend. But... For most of us, none of this impacts our gameplay experience, and it certainly doesn't impact mine. In fact, while I'm recording this video, Yulia is upstairs playing Tears of the Kingdom, discovering things and texting me all these cool things she's finding that I haven't found yet. And I'm like, what? Are you serious? That's cool. And I'm sitting here like, yeah, but these guys talking on social media, I just can't get them out of my head. And that is a me problem. So what I want to note here to round out this video is one, maybe don't let these people on social media get to you. I shouldn't let them get to me. Uh, and two... I think it's just kind of sad that this is this is the reality of the world where we, some of us anyways, feel that in order to justify the things that we enjoy, we have to put down the things we maybe don't enjoy or the things other people enjoy to help justify our purchasing decisions. The only th person you need to justify your purchase to is yourself. Uh, and if you're happy with your purchase, then it doesn't matter what anyone else says. Unfortunately, other people want to put you down for that decision because you don't agree with their opinions. It's all subjective anyways. Look, if you like Forbidden West better than, than Tears of the Kingdom, more power to you. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I disagree, but hey, you can disagree with me. Let me know your thoughts on this down in the comments below, and I'll catch you in the next video.